For the first time, Russian President Vladimir Putin is acknowledging that the brief uprising from the Wagner mercenary group brought the country on the brink of civil war. Earlier this week, Putin called those who took part in this march towards Moscow traitors. We're also learning that charges against the Wagner mercenary group leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and his troops are being dropped. In turn, the Wagner fighters are preparing to hand over heavy, heavy weapons to Russia's military. This is a signal that the group is largely responsible for gains in Russia's war in Ukraine, will now be disbanded. The news ignited a lot of questions about Putin's leadership in Russia. Is it fractured now? What happens moving forward? It also comes as the U.S. announced a new $500 million military aid package for Ukraine. Joining me now, former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine and Senior Director of the Eurasia Center at Atlantic Council, Ambassador John Herbst. Uh, thank you, as always, for being here. So first of all, there were signs that some another Russian general may have supported Prigozhin uh, in his challenge to the Russian Defense Ministry and to Putin's leadership. Talk more about his inner circle, because these are leaders in Russia who are close. They've known one another for years, some going back to the start of the Syrian war in 2011. They're not strangers. Well, Sirovikin, the general in question, very senior general, who was for months in command of the operation in Ukraine after the big invasion, um, is not part of Putin's inner circle, but he's obviously a very senior figure. So the, the report that we saw today that, in fact, he was in touch with Prigozhin and they may have been cooperating is important. It, it suggests that Prigozhin was not acting on his own. And there's some speculation that Sorovikin was initially supportive, but not able to, not willing to do much when crunch time came, which may explain why Prigozhin stood down. But that's all speculation. But it, it's it, there's no doubt that senior security officials are not happy with a the launch of the big invasion 16 months ago, b the way it's been conducted. And so this naturally leads to thoughts of change, including change of leadership. Right. And the other thing here, John, is that Putin is known for punishing his enemies. That's not a secret. People who disagree with him suffer consequences. But here you have Prigozhin in Belarus now. He is not going to face charges uh, against uh, from Russia for what he did over the weekend. What is your read on that element of this developing situation? Putin is known for punishing his enemies when his enemies are weak and he is strong. What we saw, Putin in a crisis was heading for the tall grass, right? There are credible reports that he fled Moscow on Saturday when Prigozhin's troops were marching. So Putin has decided to cut a deal with Prigozhin because he wasn't confident in his own strength and his own level of support. That's why Saturday morning, he labeled what Prigozhin was doing as, as treason, and Saturday evening, he was ready to make the deal. A lot of people are concerned and have been about Putin and his ultimate goals with the invasion of Ukraine, but Prigozhin is no Girl Scout, right? I mean, talk about the Wagner group and any threats to Putin's leadership, if that is, in fact, what we see happening. Well, the Wagner group is a mercenary, a private army, although one... We know that has been supported by military, the Russian military intelligence. But Prigozhin has emerged as a somewhat freewheeling actor over the past nine or 10 months. That's one, because the Ukrainian counteroffensive last year was a major success, and it took everyone by surprise. Two, the Russian army has performed abysmally in Ukraine. And three, the Wagner Group, acting quasi-independently, has achieved the only small success that the Russians achieved last year um, with the offensive and early this year with the offensive on Bakhmut. That that made Prigozhin popular because of his success, but popular too because he severely criticized the army for its short failings. The other thing we have happening here is Putin has offered Prigozhin's fighters the choice either come under Russian military command or leave and service, leave service, or you can go to Belarus with Prigozhin if you'd like. You can just get the heck out of Dodge. What impact will this have on the ongoing invasion and Ukraine's counteroffensive? Well, Wagner has kind of been out of the war since Wagner um, took possession of the center of the city of Bakhmut back uh, in, in May. 
And then they began, they, they were no longer involved in the fight. So this is only going to confirm what happened uh, six or eight weeks ago. Uh, in the long term, though, this whole Prigozhin affair, which is still not played out, is once again telling Russian troops fighting in Ukraine that their leaders are at each other's throats, that if you can believe Prigozhin, the pretext Putin invented for launching a large invasion was a lie, that Ukraine was not a threat to Russia, that Ukraine was not about to join NATO. And this, too, will demoralize forces fighting for Russia in Ukraine that have already been demoralized by their own bad treatment by their leaders. Yeah, and it's not just the optics for the forces on both sides, but also the Russian people uh, when we watch this play out over the weekend. Ambassador Herbst, as always, I appreciate your perspective. Thank you. This is an My important pleasure. time. I agree with you. It hasn't fully played out yet. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.